Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching my Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Well, when, Ches when Chesney's back, you know it's going to be a good show. Chesney Hawks, God bless his... Not rest, he's not dead. But <laughs> good old Chesney. Anyway, Russell the Western Network. Hope you're all safe and well. Yes, the Chesney Hawks introduction means there's another My Hammers 11. We've probably had, I reckon, over 500 now. It's mental. Over 100 ex-players. Everything available on the um, on the playlist below. Um, but today, we've, we've got a good one today. Got a good guest today. Um, you know... Actor, director, screenwriter. Um, he's been on. Well, yes, he was Jay's dad on In Between Us. Yes, he was on The Office. Yes, he was in EastEnders. He's been on everything. He's been pro uh, Silent Witness. He's even been a cameo role, according to Wikipedia, on the Basil Brush Show. So that that's <laughs> there we go. He's got the Holy Trinity. But more importantly than not, he's a West Ham fan. Let's bring him in. Season ticket holder um, and uh, all-round big, big Hammer fan. It's Dave Israel. How are we doing, Dave? Hey, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for the intro. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Yeah. yeah, it was... It, I, it, obviously, I, I mean, I was looking at looking at sort of the, you know, the, the bio and it literally is everything. Everything you've been on. Everything I've watched, yeah. you've been on somewhere. It's, I, it's did a, I did a mate's podcast recently and he knows that I'm a big fan of Gary Oldman. Uh, yeah. Despite the fact he's a Millwall fan. But um, <laughs> he said to me, do you know you got more credits than Gary Oldman? I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> a slight, slightly lower down the food chain in terms of quality, mine are. But uh, you know what I mean? It's uh, It just shows I've been at the game a long time, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it's it's great to have you on, David. And obviously, more importantly is, you know, what, have you got anything coming up? Or obviously, we were talking chatting beforehand and, yeah. you know, work and you enjoy obviously love doing the work you do what's what's on the what's on the agenda at the moment well i just went to a premiere on tuesday night uh, to see a movie that i did called the trouble with jessica and that stars rufus sewell shirley henderson wow. uh, indira varma olivia williams and um alan tudyk who's in resident alien the american yeah. tv show so it's an all-star cast. Uh, wow. Myself and Jonathan Livingston play policemen in it who are obsessed with this pudding called Clifuti. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a black comedy thriller type of a oh, movie. Brilliant. And then on May the 9th, I'm in a gangster film called Bermondsey Tales. And that's got its premiere down in South London. Oh. Um, so that's coming out. And then I've got another film coming out called Miss the Kiss, which uh, I think is coming out a couple of weeks after Bermondsey Tales, another gangster film in which I play Mr. Orange, who's the husband of Sadie Frost. Wow. Um, yeah, so I've got three big films and then an independent film called The Can, where I'm the horrible boss of a scrapyard. Um, <laughs> and they managed to get... Most of the main actors are only voiceovers. There's only me and uh, the lead actor... Oliver Cruz at who are actually appearing in the film. But they managed to get Stephen Burkhoff, Sean Dooley, wow. and a lot of other really well known actors just to do voiceovers in it. Fantastic. Yeah, I love Stephen yeah. Burkhoff. I yeah. As a as a for, this is now, now this is sort of revealing the, the fourth wall. As a as a former thespian at school, I was really gonna be an actor yeah. but, and I was I was actually the first person at my school to get an A star in GCC drama. Wow, that was so. There you go. You see, but Steen Burkoff, I I loved, I loved, loved his plays, loved his acting as well. So yeah, dude, like really you know, plays like East and West, and yeah. uh, you know, Harry's Christmas, and all. I mean, uh, he did a he did a fantastic production of Metamorphosis that Tim Roth, Saskia Reeves, and the late Gary Olsen were in uh, with with Burkoff. I mean, his plays were incredible. They're like very expressionist, you know, very yeah. movement based. Yeah, so brilliant. yeah, I was a big fan of this. Yeah, and equally entertaining is West Ham's. Uh, see the segue; that was clever. <laughs> In case, <laughs> equally entertaining, not too many, is the West Ham season so far. Obviously, you know, we'll, this will, this will be going out on uh, on probably Sunday, so we'd have played Wolves. So obviously, we haven't played Wolves yet, you know. But obviously, Leverkusen. We've got Fulham, Leverkusen again. It's a big week, big week, mate, isn't it? Big week coming up. Yeah, I think it's going to be make or break for Europe. Um, yep. 
I've still uh, depressed after the Newcastle defeat, you know, where we managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> uh, it was funny to see Man United do exactly the same thing last night. Yep. But, you know, that's the Premier League. You fall asleep for five minutes and suddenly bang, bang. And mm -hmm. Ashley Barnes, uh, when he came on, I mean, for a start, I thought it was the wrong decision to take Antonio off in that yeah. game. Uh, and then, ironically, he keeps him on in the Tottenham game when he's not playing so well. So, uh, you know, I, I was a bit... I mean, it was so obvious that as soon as he took Antonio off and brought the disaster that is Calvin Phillips on in the, in the Newcastle game, we just completely lost the initiative on the spot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was depressing to watch. I mean, I don't necessarily blame Moyes, but I just think he's... Um, you know, what I mean is by I don't blame I don't blame him for trying to consolidate when we're no, two goals that, ahead. Yeah. But he just brought on the wrong player. Phillips yeah. is so far off it. I think I, I genuinely don't think we knew how off the pace he was when we signed him. Do you know what I mean? I thought, you know, and He's not, you know, he's he's not a shit player. You know, he, I mean, before, you know, he's you got to think he's been in England set up. He's, you know, him and Deck together were were a great combination for England. And you yeah. know, Moyes was looking at him to bring him in to probably keep Deck last year. You yeah. know, the season before last, before we went to City. But yeah. um yeah, it's just, I think there's some people, and I'm not one of those people who who are naturally fit and can keep fit. <laughs> Even when they're not playing, and and I don't, I just don't think he's one of those players. I just don't think he's no. he has to really work on it. And so, look, we've got what seven games left with him now, so we won't we won't see him in a West Ham shirt. I did um, I did a top uh, a podcast with Tony Cotty actually yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying about football these days, a bit like Michael Owen said, is that really fitness will get you a long way these days. You yeah. know, I mean, the game is all about fitness. So yeah. average players can have a career just if they're fit. So the thing is, if you're not fit mm. and you can't tackle and you can't run properly, I mean, Phillips, to be fair, has got a pass on him, but he can't tackle, he can't no. run. He's not going to, you know, it, it reminded me of the games I've played against the younger guys on a Sunday, just thinking I'm so out of my depth here because they're fitter, you know, and younger. I'm well, look, <laughs> well, look at someone like Thomas Suchek. You know, Thomas Suchek, yeah. he he's, he just runs, doesn't he? He literally yeah. runs. Yeah. And, and you know, because of that, he's had a, you know, he's had a bit of a renaissance. I think he'll score the most. I think he'll get into double figures this year for goals. Yeah. And that's the first yeah. time he's done that since joining us. Yeah. Um, and you, you're totally right. It is about fitness. And, you know, then, then it sort of surprises you when you think, okay, we could have got, in the, in January, I know everyone was shitting themselves about losing points of PSR and stuff like that. But yeah. you're thinking someone like Antonio, who's not fit, and you can you can get you can get sixty minutes out of him, but that's it. Um, yeah. I mean, that was like the game on Tuesday. Sixty minutes on the mark, he was gassed. He yeah. was done. But and was weirdly, himself. weirdly, he wasn't against Newcastle. No, to, to me, he still looked strong. So I, you know, sorry to go on about that game, no. but. I have a hard job understanding why that happened. I mean, you know, Moyes should have kept him on to the 80th minute. Then there was less time for Phillips to do <laughs> to the lose. damage. But I also think that, you know, they had Barnes coming off the bench, and that's what yeah. we don't have. Yeah, that's what we yeah. don't have. We don't have game changes on that bench yet. Um, I mean, I, Ingsy, bless him, has banged in a couple from the bench, but he's not, he's not the player he was. And um, and someone like Barnes, you know, who's got pace and skill and goal scoring ability from all kinds of different situations. I, you know, I would love a player like that on, oh, yeah. you know, on yeah. the bench well, we, or even in the first team. Well, we were heavily linked to him in the summer, weren't we? And he decided yeah. to go to Newcastle instead. But, but it's OK because our, our sort of super, our super subs, we just load them out. So it's fine. So don't worry. They're having a great time in in Leon and uh, and Monaco, and and we sold and we let one go to Real Betis. So, so yeah. I mean, you get rid of Fornells and Ben Rama, and you bring in Phillips. Why? Yeah. Why? You know, and I I have to say, I'm not I'm not the Moyes out brigade. I'm yeah. not. Okay, I'll put my cards on the table. I am not the Moyes out brigade. I appreciate everything that man's done for the club. But mm. why would you yeah. do that? Yeah. He doesn't help himself, does he? he doesn't no, help himself. you have got to bring in attacking players if you let those two go. Mm. 
No, I totally agree. But we'll see what happens in the summer. You know, as I said, yeah. in, come the summer, and I've said this all, all sort of the last sort of few months, definitely. Whoever, you know, whoever happens, whoever's in the dugout, it's going to be a different system. Even if, even if Mr. Moyes does sign this contract, it won't be as a head coach. It won't be as a manager. It'll be as a head coach with yeah. Tim Stein. And that's, that's the way it's set up. So look, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a different, um, different emphasis going forward, I think, in, in, in the summer. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully because, with Europe. Because I am, I was quite surprised again. Sorry to name drop. No, but Tony Cotty did say to me that Moyes makes all the decisions on the transfers. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Steiden suggests players, but Moyes has got the final yes or no. He's got the final yes or no, yeah, currently, yeah. yeah. But that, that yeah. that's going to change, you know. That's the whole, whole idea of bringing, you know, this, well, the pearl diver, they call him, isn't it? The pearl diver. So getting in someone like Tim Steiden is to find those people and he hasn't had a bad hit record you know he's taken he's, we've sold Declan Rice we've bought in you know JWP was Moises anyway but he's bought in Caduce he's bought in Alvarez he's bought in Mavropanos that ain't too bad no no That's Alvarez something. has been an absolute oh, legend him. he's love been him. fantastic he's so you good, know he? him and Pakatar we don't win games when they're not playing basically no nah, no nah. you know nah, so, we, so we, true and we've not won in four and Alvarez has been suspended is it for two of those two yeah. of those yeah so, yeah. and obviously he'll be, he'll be. Although he'll come back for the Wolves game, which will will be after when we put this video out, and then he uh, and then he's suspended again for the first leg, isn't he? Against Leverkusen, so yeah. Well, so at least at least he'll be back for the Fulham game at home. Do you, do you get obviously as a season ticket holder, Dave? Do you, do you get to as many games as you like to at the moment? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pretty con- I'm pretty consistent. Um, last season I missed a couple because of filming. Yeah. Um, but I did manage to go to Alkmaar last season for the um, for the conference league. Nearly got battered <laughs> over there, and I was in the section that got attacked, which was a bit scary. Yeah. Uh, and the season before that, in the Europa, I went to uh, Seville. Yeah. I went to Lyon, saw that famous victory, and then I went to Frankfurt, which was. A Cresswell so disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, like bless. you go all the way over there. You know, you've been spent all your money going to all these places. You go all the way to Frankfurt and he gets sent off and you're like, that's it. Yeah. It just Game wasn't over. it wasn't it wasn't to be for Aaron, was it? Bless him. <laughs> it wasn't to be. No. Oh dear. Well, hopefully we won't we'll keep him away from uh from Leverkusen. We sort of had, he sort of turned up a little bit for the Freiburg game, didn't he? A bit of redemption. Yeah. Um but yeah, he uh did. But hopefully we'll keep them well out of the way for the Leverkusen game. Uh, with, uh, I'm, I'm, ner- I'm nervous about Leverkusen. I mean, I am, I don't know. Our, our name drop when we had Dean Ashton on the other day. Um, afterwards, I was talking to him about the game. I don't know why I didn't record it, but it made no sense. Um, he was saying that he fancies us on two legs against Leverkusen. He says <laughs> because of, he does a lot of commentary for Bundesliga side, you know, and he's like, honestly, the standard of football in the Bundesliga isn't as good as the Premier League. No. And so, you know, yes, they haven't lost the game, but he he he, fo- he sort of forecasted a, predicted a, a draw out there or a narrow defeat and then do them back at London Stadium. Mm. And I think, you know, I mean, we, I mean, you've been to all the Europe, obviously all the European games. I mean, I you know, for yeah. me, it's when you've got that second leg at home. Yeah. It's so much better. It is, it is, it's and that's so where good. that's where we came uh, a cropper against uh, Frankfurt. Actually, yeah, is that the second leg was away? So, uh, and I, I think, what did they beat us at home? Was it one nil or I think it's one nil, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the problem is, the minute they score on their own ground, then you've got to score three goals, yeah. and you just so the other way, you know, and our our uh, record at home in Europe is phenomenal, mm. absolutely phenomenal. You know, I mean, we have had some great away results as well, like Leon, even yeah. against Seville, you know, who have won that Europa League seven times. We only lost one nil out there. Yeah. Then uh, Jan Malenko famously hit the winner, didn't he? Yeah, uh, amazing um, that was. Yeah, written, it was yeah. written for him for that winner. But you're totally yeah. right. I mean, even that I mean that Freiburg game, we were playing Freiburg in, you know, and it wasn't we already played them and it was like, you know, in a weird time. It was like five fifteen kickoff, weren't it? But yeah. the atmosphere was absolutely phenomenal. It's I one know. of the best ones I've had all season. And and because where I sit, so I sit in the um in that so where the where the dugout is, if you look up, there's a big white box at the top. Oh, yeah, so I yeah. sit I sit on the 
front corner there. Um, mm. So, and then when I, but it's soundproofed. So our booth wow. is soundproofed. But <laughs> I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a good thing about the foundations, but it rocks. You can, <laughs> I, 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 I can feel it swaying when the crowd are sort of, you know, really getting into it. Yeah. And I was like, I was not expecting that atmosphere. And I think on wow. Thursday after next, it's going to be absolutely buzzing there. Yeah, um, I mean, it's still something in the game. Yeah, all those flames as well, and you know, and West Ham are massive, and yeah, you know what we are, and all of that stuff. I just think it's gone up a notch, even from the first couple of seasons. No, I agree. You know, yeah, uh, you know, now, now we kind of expect to win, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we do, we do. Yeah. I mean, that Freiburg game, we we expected to go through, and. Yeah. You know, and, and I think obviously, and then you know, potentially looking ahead, and it could be a nice trip to Italy in yeah. the semis. Yeah, what well, against Roma or Milan? <laughs> or, or Milan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, like. I don't particularly want to go to Roma because they start stabbing you in the bum with their. Uh... <laughs> I mean, that's not going to be much fun over there. Um, but uh, but I think yeah, Milan would be Milan would be an amazing. Oh, could you? Imagine? I mean, I, I've I've got visions of of actually either side. I've got you know, if we got through visions of like ten thousand hammers, either in the San Siro or just taking over the Colosseum in Rome. You could just, <laughs> <laughs> with Palo Di Cano at the front, <laughs> yeah. massive, yeah. massive Lazio player as well, isn't conducting it? the course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No references to Mussolini, but it'll be okay. You know. No, no it would yeah. be amazing. I mean, Rome's an incredible city. I did a yeah. TV job out there year before last called Domina, and uh, I spent a couple of weeks out there. It's an incredible place, mm. you know. Beautiful. Um, yeah, but their fans are a bit mad. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. And I think that's what you get. I mean, you, it, it, that's what I love about the European games. It doesn't matter who you play. I mean, like you got to think. Like when we played like Viborg and Silkenborg, and they've been brilliant. Yeah, I mean all the yeah. opposite. I mean, even I remember the the first was that was the first one. Oh, was it? Oh, was it? Well, I can't remember who it was. But when they threw the um, the bottle of water, they had like one of these massive um, like water coolers, and so they managed to get a. We can't <laughs> even take an umbrella in that's more than this big. But they managed yeah. to get this massive water. They just started lobbing it over the balcony. Uh, that was an Anderlecht, was it? Was it? No, one of those, it? no, it was one. I think it was a Polish side. Oh, okay. In the first, yeah. in the in the in the first lot, I think you might make oh, yeah. I can't remember like what they were called now. Yeah, you sort of <laughs> we get blasé to it now, David. Yeah. You, you're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some small club in. in well, the- I mean, I do think the passion in Europe has kind of taken me by surprise. Yeah. I mean, the French supporters in Lyon, you know, they have two massive ends, yeah. and then Frank, you know, the German fans are incredible. They they've got some of the best supported clubs, Definitely. and the Eintracht Frankfurt fans were like, you know, letting off all these lights and fireworks i think it was all rehearsed and orchestrated yes. but you know and he, and seville you know it was a really nice atmosphere in seville but their fans were really passionate and what what i love about them is uh and particularly i think it's pretty frankfurt and seville and actually freiburg as well i think uh, away is all they do is they all wear white yeah so it's like yeah. a, it's actually really not intimidating but it's quite like takes you back everyone's in white it's like i think it is a bit intimidating it's a bit like at alkmaar you know those 200 so-called ultras yes steamed rn they're all dressed in black hoodies yeah and yeah. and there were a lot of young kids but there was one older guy and when i say older i'm thinking late 30s who was kind of orchestrating it all i mean yeah. it was it was quite scary i i actually think the dutch have got a bit of a issue around hooliganism which is ironic because we always used to have the problems and we're now the ones who are becoming the victims. Uh, oh well, uh, it's 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 a, it's a first world problem to have, isn't it? Because now we've got yeah. European, uh, uh-huh. European, and hopefully again next season we'll see. I, I suppose it's you know there's about three or four teams chasing for those last couple of spots, so we'll see what happens. But hopefully we have European football. Is next it year, uh, so. seventh or eighth place? Are we, are we getting at the moment? Next? It's yeah, at the moment it's seventh is a, is a stop off, but. Then there's all the if that that's as it is at the moment. I think if man if if City win and us yeah. or Liverpool win or Aston Villa, then we get more points and everything gets but dropped are we, down. To, are we not getting like five teams in the Champions League yeah, and then something, yeah, something like yeah. that. And then if West Ham West if West Ham win Europa League, then there'll be six teams apparently. Which oh wow. 
which is the first, it's the most ever a club that a country has had it. So, look, well, well you know, happens. you know, people have accused us of uh, winning the Mickey Mouse trophy, you know, with the conference thing. Yeah. If we win it this season, no one no can one. say we've had an easy ride. Yeah. You but know. then, but then, Will Moyes carry on because he would have the opportunity to be the first manager ever to win the conference, the Europa, and the Champions League in successive seasons. That's oh, the question. I think he'd, he'd have to if he wins the Europa, he's got to carry on. I think, I think that I think if we get to the Champions League, I, I'm I'm considering retirement from from being the the, the butter <laughs> monkey, as Sean calls it, because. That would be my, you know, for a match day DJ playing the Champions League music is like, I've got, we've got this crap one for the Europa League in the conference. It yeah. doesn't work. Ooh, ooh, but playing the Champions League music, yeah, that's yeah. that's it. I can't, I can't, you know, then bubble. That, that's that's you doing the DJing at every European game, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, oh, no. Yeah. So I, no, so I'm, I'm the, so I do the. That's Tony. Tony Perry is the one down the front giving it. That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I love, yeah, I, yeah, I, I love Tony. He's, he's yeah. nicest man in football. He is. He's beautiful man. No, I'm. I do the uh, everything else. So like all bubbles, oh, and I've been doing that for twenty three years now. Right. So sort of the assistant, assistant, assistant yeah. to the announcer. You know, <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah, basically yeah, what yeah. it is. But <laughs> yeah, so that would be me. Oh, I might have to retire after that if we got to the Champions League, but I probably won't. Because the wife quite likes the fact that I'm out of the house every Saturday. Um, <laughs> well, right, the, let, let's yeah, go on. Go on. I was really, just really, going to say. I was going to say the chances are we'd be playing Liverpool in the final. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Jurgen Klopp's last game and yeah. uh, in Dublin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I've, I found out matching on holiday that day. Uh, now, so I'm away. Oh, <laughs> for the champ- no. I didn't realize until the other day. <laughs> um, so I'll be watching it with the Dubai Hammers uh, instead in the pub in Nilsons in the middle of uh, Media City in Dubai if we get through. So, yeah. yeah. There are worse places to watch it. I was, I was it filming, sounds a bit like Dublin. Yeah, I was filming for the Prague final, so I watched it at the ground and it was rocking. It was oh. absolutely rocking. It was a great atmosphere there. Amazing, isn't it? So it just, yeah. and it's, it's just, it's, I think it's just amazing how, you know, with something like 30, 35, almost 40,000 people out there and the fan park and, and Chesney, God bless him, giving it the old big one. You know, I'm the one and only yeah. on stage. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then there's obviously go, taking it back to Stratford as well. And, you know, I was brilliant. there. I was there for the trophy presentation. Amazing. In Stratford. Right? Yeah. We queued up for about four hours to, well, not queued up, but, you know, hung around yeah. for four hours waiting for him. And it was great. It was amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about, let's talk about b- before last season. Let's talk about, you know, the beginning, so to speak, the, the origin story of, of, of why David is a hammer. Why? Why? Well, it's a really, my background is a bit weird because uh, my dad uh, was American, God rest his yes. soul. And uh, my mum was English and my mum hailed from Essex uh, and all her family used to live in South Ockenden. I think she oh, was I'm actually... Hornchurch. I'm in Hornchurch, so... Oh, OK. Yeah, so you know <laughs> South Organ. I think she was originally, when she was much younger, brought up in uh, North London, I think. And then they all moved out to Essex. Yeah. And all of the family were always West Ham supporters. I think my my mum's uh, father, actually, was Tottenham. Uh, <laughs> so we used to have a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, push and pull around the football. But I would always sit down and watch the football with my granddad, despite him being a Tottenham fan. Yeah. And uh, because we were we were uh, emigrating back and forth, back and forth to America all the time, I didn't actually see my first West Ham game until 1976, um, when I was about 14. Because mm. my dad had no interest in football. Of course, yeah. And where I lived in Stevenage, if I'd have gone to West Ham, it was in the punk days. And all the skinheads were like Tottenham fans. Bizarre. Yeah. Absolutely bizarrely. So I ended up like having to get dragged along to Tottenham because I I was desperate to watch uh, West Ham play, uh, but there were just no West Ham supporters in Stevenage. So uh, so uh, you know I, I I hate admitting this, but for the first few games I you know I did have to um, I did have to go and watch Tottenham, and then one of my uncles took me to West Ham, uh, nineteen seventy six. It was a one-all draw against Leicester. I think Alan Taylor scored uh, the equaliser. And I was just like, you know, we stood That's in the it. chicken run yeah. at the time. 
And uh, I just remember just being like, you know, I've come home. This is yeah. where my heart is, you know, because I, obviously I watched all the games on TV and match of the day. And, you know, I even remember when we got to the League Cup final, or was it the semi-final in, uh, in 1971, was it, against Stoke? I think got, so, yeah. Yeah, we got knocked out against Stoke, I remember. Uh, and then the season after that, we sold Jeff Hurst to Stoke. So I remember all those days. And mm. I I mean, I was just completely West Ham mad all the time. Yeah. And then when I eventually came down to London uh, to go to drama school in South London, I just became a regular. I got a season to get there and then because it was near and easy to get to. Uh, and that was it. I just, I just was like a fixture at Upton Park, um, and that was that would have been eighty five. Oh wow! So really, yeah. sort of the yeah, end, that sort of yeah glory era. That sort of yeah coming into sort of obviously the boys of eighty six and stuff yeah. like that as well. Yeah, and I remember those games. I was telling Tony Dotti, I remember him and Macavenny vividly. There was a TV blackout during there was yeah those games. So you know, I was I was grateful that I managed to get in the ground and see a lot of those. Mm. But um, but yeah, I was like, I was going to West Ham all the time. Then. It's funny when you, it's, I remember, I, I can't, it might even be when I, because obviously, you know, I, I do the, you know, the ex-player circuit. And so obviously we've, we've had a lot of them 86 boys, 85 80 boys of 86 yeah. on. And, and, and Mac, we have on quite a lot. And he was, he was mentioning once, um, he was part of a, a match of the day. Or it might have been a grandstand program because of the blackout. They had him on near near Tower Bridge, um, and they were into asking people, the members of the public, "Who's this man?" Um, and 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 very few of them recognised the fact that he was one of the top leading goal scorers in the league um, because <laughs> no one had seen him. Um, we had there was another guy I can't remember the guy we interviewed. It was his first, and it was his first West Ham game was an Orient friendly. So we always used to play the O's in the friendly, didn't we? At yeah, Monday. that's right. And, um, and Dagenham and Redbridge as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, Ma- and Macca, um was was playing, and and he wanted to see this guy because he'd heard about him, and he'd mis- misspelled his or misread his name, so he didn't realise he was Scottish. He thought he was Italian, Machiavelli, and <laughs> and like because he had this blonde hair and stuff like that. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But yeah, but and it's those guys, and and that sort of period. Obviously, a lot of people are still very fond of that period, and. As I said, we yeah. still we do these ex-player nights, and they sell out every 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 event because people love and find them really relatable. You know, the stories yeah. don't change. It doesn't add another. Macca's still talks about you know going on a milk cart with Julian Dix to stop running, you know, around Chadwick and all that type of stuff. The stories <laughs> don't change, but they're just so relatable, isn't it? I think that's one of the real yeah. things with like. So my daughter, she's eleven now, and. You know, she's she's kind of getting into West Ham now because I think she realizes that. You know, boys like football and yeah. boys like girls who like football as well. So, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> so it's, you don't have that sort of relationship with players now. She sort of sees them on TikTok, on Twitter. As you said, you can sit there and t- talk to Tony and yeah. he'll just relay stories. And it's yeah. really sad, I think, really. And there's all that, that relationship between footballers and players and fans is, is, is more of a on screen rather than, Relatable yeah. now, you know. I'd see Macca down. You, Macca was or, or Julian or someone like that, someone that you could walk into a pub and you'd imagine him being at the bar drinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you would. You wouldn't even get him in the pub these days because of the fitness levels and stuff. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, they'd be you too know. busy on TikToks to recording them out there. <laughs> their, uh, their, uh, yeah, their fitness regimes. It's just really. I was just thinking about it the other day. You know, we we were very fortunate to have a lot of the ex players on, and they're all so relatable. But obviously, I think I'm. Um, you know. Another t- 20, 20 years time. I don't expect going down the Queen's Theatre to see an evening with I don't know uh, Felipe Anderson ho- hosted by <laughs> ho- hosted by Side Ben Rama. You know, it's, just, it's, it's not, not going to work. Look at that same no. that same thing, which is a shame. But uh, well, you know, and also in the old days, there was a lot of local players as well. Yeah, you're you right. Know, you know, a lot of, a lot of the West Ham players were local boys. You know, like Cotty is and. Even before that, you know, you've got Jeffers. But Billy Bonds, I think, originally came from Charlton, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. And then Redknapp. You know, they were all local local mm. lads. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's kind of what's changed. You know, football's international now. Mm. Very, very much so. You know, there's some great things about that. I mean, look at Payet, the skill mm. level 
of someone like Pilate, Pilate, Di, uh, Di Canio, uh, you know, Pacatar. I mean, it's we probably wouldn't see the like of those kind of players if football hadn't gone the way it has gone. No, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, as I said, someone like yourself who's been a season ticket holder for the last, you know, 40 odd years you know yeah. he's in the transformation of of West Ham from you know we were talking just before from you know the academy and now that sort of that academy you know it's it's now very irregular you know it's almost as a, a surprise when you see an academy player get some minutes whereas mm. back in your day you know you had the likes of Alan Dickens and you had loads of these players who were TC who were coming through from the ranks into the first team yeah. um, and even as before then you know I see Staggett, I see Brian Deere every every Sunday, every match day. <laughs> and he still talks about, you know, driving in, on his on his chopper, on his bike, going into the ground and, you know, Bobby Moore and people like that. And it's it's a yeah. shame because, you know, though we do see the likes of the Pyatts, the Paquettas, the Canios, you know, that you miss that sort of community feel of having the likes of, you know, I don't know, Divine and Barmer or George Earthy or Ollie yeah. Skiles and some really good kids in the academy just won't get the minutes they deserve because, you know, as you said, football has become international now, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's, and, it's also, a debate. and also it's a results business. So there's yeah, no totally time, right. you know, Moyes doesn't uh, bed these kids in in the way that he could do because if, you know, he loses one game and his job's on the line. Oh, God, yeah. You know. And I, you know, our fans, you know, and I have to say at times I've been just as fickle. So you're going, oh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, shit, sack him. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Fourth so against you got sack him, you know. And it, I think it's gone very much like that these days. You know, you're mm. only as good as your last game or two. Yeah. And that's probably social media led as well, I think, you know, whereas before, you know, back in the 80s, if we'd lost, you know, you'd go down the bowling and you'd shout to the bloke next year, you slag him off and then that's it. Whereas you now slag him off on Twitter and he gets retweeted 3,000 times, you know, or, or, or you put a video up like we did of a certain midfield player on loan doing this and it goes fucking viral and you <laughs> We didn't mean to do that, uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, it's and that's just the way it is. I think, unfortunately, you know, you know, you know what it reminds me of. Do you remember in there's a play called The Crucible, which is yes. all about the witch hunts? Yeah, that's what it's like now. Social media is, yeah, right, cancel that person, cancel them, get him in trouble, you know. And uh, and and I think you know, that goes in my business, it goes you know, in, in the acting game. I mean, you say one wrong thing uh, mm. about things that are, you know, kind of political hot potatoes, and that's it. That mm. could be the end of your career. Yeah. So I don't say anything anymore. You know, I used no, to be, yeah. I used to be fairly opinionated on social media, but I'm too old to get have my career cancelled and start again. I mean, having <laughs> said that, I think my career is cancelling itself anyway. But. <laughs> Or we, or what we could do all day. We could do just kick a cat, and then you'd be cat, you'd be captain of the football club within, within, within eighteen he, months, isn't it? He got a lot of stick for that, though, didn't he? Oh my god! But what did Moyes do? Do this? He played him. He started that first game after after he'd done that. Now this Moyes is going to be this is going to be controversial. What I'm going to say. Nice. Right? Okay. Here's the controversy. He didn't actually kick him in the way that no. everyone. That cat slid across the floor. <laughs> it wasn't a flying drop. It took kick. a dive. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, he, sort of, he sort of ushered it across the floor with his foot, otherwise known as a kick. But it wasn't like he came and launched the cat's head into Rose's head. If he yeah. had done that, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been supporting him. No, it was, uh, yeah, uh, it was, it, again, it's, it's social media, isn't it? Once social media gets involved, things get exaggerated. It's like we put that video up and then, like Sky Sports and bloody Talk Sport and everyone saying now, you know, West Ham fans were hanging around after the game and abu you know, shouting abuse at him. And it wasn't. Someone literally, he got on the bus, someone shouted out, useless. And he's went, fuck off. That's literally all we did. <laughs> but it became it became that he fights back against the hate of the No, it wasn't. It's like me. It's like someone saying, I'll run. it's like literally I, you know, I might overcook. I overcook the steak or, or my daughter goes, what? Oh, this is awful. I'll piss off. You know, that's literally all that happened. But um, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, social media is a, it's a strange place. It's a strange place. Yeah. But as yeah. I said, since, since obviously the eight, since uh, obviously the eighties season ticket holder, seen a lot. Is there any, is there any games that you go that just 
what's front of mind when you think about your, you know, going to West Ham? Obviously, you speak about some of the European nights at London Stadium. We spoke about that, yeah. but in in the in the old days or in the Upton Park days, any yeah. games you go, oh. I mean, you know, I remember watching Man United West Ham when Wayne Rooney was playing mm. and we got absolutely annihilated by him. I think the, the score was like 4-1 in this particular game and Rooney yeah. was like at his absolute height. And also Ronaldo was playing oh. uh, for United then. Watching him play. Yeah. Uh, and also um, Liverpool when we, we lost 5-3, I think it was, when Rushy and Aldridge were oh. playing for Liverpool. Those games really yeah. stick in my mind. And then, of course, you know, obviously the cup finals. I mean, starting with the 2006 one against oh. Liverpool, which is a heartbreaker. And yeah. I, I was there for the playoff final when we beat uh, Preston at yeah. the Millennium Stadium. I got banned from driving because I, <coughs> I got lost on the way there. So I was doing like 100 miles an hour through these villages. <laughs> and I remember, so I had no idea where I was. I was using this... Tom Tom sat nav, yeah. and um, and it had gone completely wrong. It was taking me the wrong. So I put, I poked my head out the window and I said to these kids, <laughs> thinking I'm never going to make the game. It's probably on the other side of town. Can you tell me where the ground is? He went, give us a quid. <laughs> Watch it. Give me a quid, boy. So I gave him a quid. He said it's literally down the road. I thought <laughs> they're lying. I drove down the road. There it was, parked up. I legged it all the way, and I got there just as the game was kicking off. So Brilliant. I re I remember that vividly. It took me about four hours to get there, and uh, <coughs> so there's games like that. You know, obviously the cup finals of um, eighty and seventy five. Mm -hmm. I remember. You know, so many games. So many yeah, games. I mean, I remember. I remember seeing. I remember you, when you mentioned <coughs> of, about Rooney and Ronaldo. I remember seeing. Arsenal, when Arsenal was sort of a Thierry Henry in their pomp, and oh, I remember yeah. him at him at Upton Park, and he was the most. I, I I don't usually get in awe of other players, other teams, but I watched him, and just the way he ran, he was he was almost like he was skating on ice. Oh. He was so fluid; it was it was amazing. But um, yeah, you've seen some good players. I've seen seen Messi yeah. obviously yeah. when we played Argentina. I remember seeing him there. And oh, uh, yeah, some some yeah. amazing players have graced the pitches, but uh, yeah, some good games. And obviously, famously, the last game of the season, last game oh, at the Park. Yeah, obviously that it's was Man United. Yeah, cracking yeah, game that was. Is it three one we beat him? Yeah, I think three or yeah. three two, something like that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Great. yeah, remember that. Yeah, I was on jewelry service that day. That was that was. Hilarious. Oh, were you? <laughs> yeah, and, and fortunately, my case, not my case, but the case I was I was a juror for um, was. Delayed until the afternoon, so I drove up early, and obviously I had my pass. And then there was no. It's probably about eight o'clock in the morning. There was no one in the ground, and at West End you could basically sort of walk through if you had your pass. So I did, yeah. and just said my goodbyes then, like you know, quite sort of like you know, you know symbolic. But I knew when I was coming back, it was going to be absolutely manic, and there'd be thirty, thirty-five, thirty-six thousand people in there, yeah. just walking around. Had a wee in the changing room, you know, did all the things that. You know, sat where I used to sit with my granddad, sat where I moved, and then obviously, you know, that type of thing. Amazing, amazing place that was. I'll tell you um, what, I also remember the game where we got knocked out of the semi final by Forest, where Tony Gale got sent yeah. off. I was at the home game after that, and the whole crowd singing his name. Mental, innit? Lose 4 yeah. 1, and, and, and they yeah, were just yeah. absolutely. There was just so many, you know. Just uh, I remember, I think I think we had, might have actually been Tony saying it was it was it was embarrassing, really. You know, we were winning for yeah. we lost four one, and the crowd were the best I've ever heard. You know, it was <laughs> it's just it's yeah. And I, I totally got that, totally understood that. But it was um, yeah, it's it's one of those things that you mentioned, like you know, you went that first time you felt at home, and I mean, we've had I said done over five hundred of these interviews, and. Every one of them, their first game. I don't think we had one go. It was all right. When I came back like two years later, it was literally everyone. That's it. I was hooked. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I came back. You know, and and it's so true. And even the players. You know, you say, you know, I love interviewing players who have played five games, ten games, because we always yeah. hear that from Tony or people like that. I like hearing from people like Sebastian Carroll or you know people who have been on loan, you know, Henry Lansbury, these type of people. And even they speak so highly of West Ham as a club. Yeah. It really warms your heart, you know, and um it's not we you know, I know we jokingly say West Ham are massive and but 
We are. We sort yeah. of are. We are. We've doubled our attendance since we left Upton Park. And I think these European excursions have given us uh, more support throughout Europe. But I've got a great one for you about a player who never quite made it. Scott Mean. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> I worked with him on a TV show called Dream Team. So yes. I said to him, what's your outstanding memory at West Ham? And he said, at Liverpool, we were, I think, 5 nil down. And Harry Redknapp sent me on. And he was like, <laughs> he's going, fuck off. I don't want to go on. Redknapp's going, get on the pitch. And he's going, I'm on a hide into nothing. We're 5 nil down. <laughs> And, and he said, you know, it was like the weirdest thing. He'd waited years and years, you know, to get a game at West Ham and he didn't want to play because he was humiliated. Oh, I love, but I love stories yeah. like that. And that's the thing I love stories like that because, you know, and you get that, you know, it's just like, I remember, I can't remember who it was. It might have been, oh, someone, it was someone random. I can't remember who it was. And, and, and they said, oh, I, I only played five times for West Ham. And, you know, and it's like, I feel a bit sort of like, I said, but yeah. you did what something that which me and millions of people would have changed their whole life to do once. Yeah. You walked out wearing West Ham colours to Bubbles, Upton Park or whatever. And it's yeah. just such a, such an, you know, it, it, from a fan's perspective, it is an amazing club. As you said, you know, you probably get people all the time coming up to you, you know, and asking yeah, for I pictures do. and stuff like yeah. that. And it's it's just such a lovely club. And, and that's what I love doing these interviews because you interview, interview people and you share your passion with someone else. And it's, it's sometimes it's quite emotional because you talk to people and they they talk about, you know, obviously losing loved ones and things like that. And yeah. it is really much, but West Ham is the, is the thing which keeps sort of the thread throughout it all. It's, it's an amazing, yeah. um, it's an amazing club. And I don't think people realize it unless you're in the bubble. No. Um, and I think, I think, you know, if you go to those European nights and you mm. see that that's West Ham at their best, that's the passion. Okay. There's the bad games like against Burnley when we went three nil down and yeah. there was pitch invasion yeah. and everyone giving no, the ball. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think back to that a lot and I go, look how it's turned around. Mm. And that's Moisey who's done that. You know, look how that has turned around. That is Moisey's doing. And, it's crazy, isn't it? When you think about it, you think about, yeah. and, and again, like sometimes I think you're right. Sometimes if you look back and I know people, you know, it's just always good your last game really in terms of management, but you look back and look where we were three and a half years ago yeah. when he took over pre COVID, yeah. um, pre zoom. No one, yeah. no one knew what the fuck zoom was then. Yeah, back then. No one could, no one could put the things up their nose or down their throat. Everyone would choke, wouldn't they? But now we can do it. No problem. Now we're used to it in terms of the PCR test. Oh, the COVID, but, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can do that. No problem. Now I used oh, to be, I remember God. the first one. <laughs> do you know, during that time I was doing, I was doing a lot of traveling with the football yeah. and work and the amount of times I had those oh. things shoved up my bloody nose. Oh, it's awful, was not it? And they keeps on yeah. changing the rules, didn't they? They keeps on changing the rules. I remember yeah. once we, I remember once we did a, we was going to like Lapland on holiday, and it changed the PCR rules changed about five times, it, like before we'd left. So we literally had to take extra ones because thinking if I get if one of us is is you know gets COVID and the other one's stuck in Lapland for Christmas and oh. God, but yeah, but now look where we are, and we're sort of yeah. being relatively blasé about which oh, which foreign team were we talking about? Oh, it was a bad, I can't remember. You know, Only Leverkusen, crazy. you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a minute. If we, be, if we beat Leverkusen, I would go so far as to say that would be our greatest victory in Europe, given, given where they are. I mean, I'm not including the final victories because that's winning the trophy. But in terms of the quality of the opposition... I mean, that, that Anderlecht team that stuffed us 4-2 was pretty special with uh, mm. Francois van der Elf. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, got a bit of a cut. <coughs> but yeah. um, <coughs> but all of all the teams we faced, I think Leverkusen are potentially the most daunting. But then we did, you know, when we played Seville, I thought we were going to lose to them. Me too, yeah. Because they had Me Kunde too. at the back, didn't they? They had... Um... I mean, they had... They had... Moise's wet dream when we played Sevilla in terms of um, uh, Enesri. He's a guy, yeah, he yeah. loves him, doesn't he? He absolutely yeah. loves him. So, um, I mean, there's certain players that Moise has hard-ons for, like Calvin Phillips he had a hard-on for, for for several years, um, and JWP and stuff. And, you know, I thought Seville, I thought it's nice. it was nice while it lasted, you know. Little, yeah, yeah. I never thought we'd get out of the group stages, to be honest, that first yeah. European. I thought, yeah, nice little try, we'll have a go. And and then it just got worse. And then the, the Sevilla game, and obviously playing second leg at home, and then 
then you're playing like Leon. You're thinking, oh yeah, Leon, a good side. But yeah, we won't. Buy... Mm. Oh, shit, so, okay. oh, so if you press me on a game that stands out the most out of all of those European games, I'd have to say Leon away because yeah, I was yeah. there and the atmosphere in the in the stadium and the sheer disbelief. Or I was yeah. set up in the upper tier with all the West Ham fans, and we were like trying to keep quiet because the french fans were giving us the evils and we just couldn't in the end we're all like jumping up and being glad i thought i was gonna get out of there with with my head in you know <laughs> separated from my body but it was just such an amazing game and we played classic counter-attacking football pakatar was playing for them then yeah, um, and it's when it works. It's when that sort of and and that's that's that Moyes type, you know, Moyes balls, not Moyes. It's a counter attacking football. Yeah, when it works, it that's when it works perfectly, and it it, yeah. it sort of it almost like fits and starts. It works how we intended it to work, and that was one of those games. And obviously, yeah. that was that's what cemented you know Ballon Dawson as Ballon Dawson when it when BT Sport put it on the thing, and it's like. <laughs> Even they were yeah. taking the piss, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. It, it was a revelation. What was he? Two million quid from Watford. Yeah, I, I remember getting Watford fans messaging me saying, "Thanks for taking our worst player." And I and... was thinking, "What the fucking hell are we doing <laughs> buying him a Watford player?" You know, get out, Moyes. <laughs> yeah, Moyes out. Moyes out. And, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, he turned out to be a legend. But that's what I love. I love. I love being proven wrong. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, we we yeah, we all think we're armchair experts, and <laughs> you know, to be honest, you know, you know, we we'll, we sit you and me sitting on a podcast, you sitting in front of a, a webcam talking about West Ham, not at the chat, not at Rush Green doing the training. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, I think exactly. we're, we're a lot of a lot of us are armchair fat, armchair critics and stuff. And when it yeah. works, it works. And when I love getting proven wrong, and yeah. um, he proved us wrong about Craig Dawson. And in yeah. fact, I think he's one of the reasons why we're letting in a lot of goals recently. I don't think we've got, I think we need a Craig Dawson. Yeah. We need someone like that. I, where I thought actually it was Zuma or Gerd or, or Ogbonna, whoever he was playing, playing with made yeah. him a better player. I think yeah. it was the other way around. I think he was making those players better players. And, um, yeah. Christ, we need someone like him now, I think, to sew up this defence. Yeah. So yeah, because Mavropanos has got a ricket in him and Zuma's knees yeah. have basically gone. He can barely run. Um, you know, but Zuma, forget considering he's got those injuries. Oh, last he's week, still, amazing! He's, he's still an absolute stalwart at the background. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that, uh, I mean, that, that Spurs game is like, where did yeah. that perform? I was, I was absolutely dreading the fact he'd played on Saturday. It's Tuesday. You're playing against Human Son. You're playing yeah. against Kulazewski, Brennan yeah. Johnson, and he had Son in his pocket. Yeah, yeah, amazing. He's a great defender. If, if he hadn't done his knees in, I think he'd be absolute top draw still. I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree with you. Totally agree. Right. Okay. Let's let's talk about um we talk about lots of great players. Let's talk about your your favourite players. Let's talk about um the Hammers Eleven. So as I said, everyone we've had on the channel has put this Hammers Eleven together. That's the whole principle of the of the, of the whole fucking point to be honest. But <laughs> in essence, everyone apart from I tell you he hasn't given it. Nigeria Koki didn't give an 11 because he was just a bit weird. Um, Ian Bishop <laughs> didn't because Ian, Ian, Bishop didn't want to piss anyone off. Um, and Harry Redknapp didn't because he started talking about Bobby Ferguson and then ran out of time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, that's it's, the- it's difficult because I love Bobby Ferguson. I love Mervyn Day. There's so many keepers, but I think the best keeper's got to be Phil Parks. Yeah, Parksy. What a what a yeah. what a what a just a just a man mountain, isn't he, Phil yeah. Parks? Absolute yeah. man mountain. Um, as I said, we've had uh, lots of his his era on the channel, um, yeah. and they've all spoken so highly of Parksy. Uh, as yeah. you said, I think goalkeepers are apart from apart from Roberto, we've had a good run of goalkeepers. Yeah, we we always seem to get solid keepers, don't we? I mean. Mm. You know, Mervyn Day had his moments, you yep. know, back then. Um, I mean, we've had some iffy ones like Craig Forrest. He wasn't such a great keeper. And Shaka. Shaka was a bit hit and miss, wasn't he? And David we love James. I, David yeah, James as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shaka, uh, yeah, I mean, Shaka, I, I mean, he's, I like Shaka. I can't, <laughs> he's a, because <laughs> no, Shaka, this is, again, talking about relatable <laughs> players. 
I mean, when I used to live in Loughton when I was a kid, he oh, I'd work in Safeways, um, and he would do his Friday Big Shop. Oh, okay. Was, and and because he was so tall, you could see him because his head was above the. He's about six foot <laughs> seven or something ridiculous <laughs> like that, um, and uh, absolutely man mountain of a man, and uh, yeah, very very sweet man. But uh, yeah, sh- yeah, Phil Parks, yeah, I love yeah. Yeah, love Parks. He just oozed class, wasn't he? And he was like the last. He was probably the last of that generation where the goalkeepers were just units. Because yeah. then he went to Ludo, didn't it? And it was more athletic yeah. and yeah. and very different. But uh, yeah. Ludo and- was good as well, you know. But I I just think Phil Parks was class wasn't he it was like england england quality really definitely definitely right yeah. we'll put parks in um yeah. right who's gonna go next we'll try and keep it to a 442 if we can but All if right. not doesn't matter just well, a bit I'll, easier. Go, I'll go um ray stewart just because i've seen him banging so yeah, many penalties Tonka. Yeah. What a man. What a yeah. man. Love him. Love the man. He is very much a friend of the channel. Um, and what I love about Tonka is he is, there's a few players. There's a few players, I think, and Tonka's probably one of them. Um, maybe Ginger Pele as well, yeah, where yeah. they're not from around these parts, Yeah, but they just get it. Yeah. They just get what it is to be a West Ham fan and to have all the just, everything around being what West Ham fan is, you know, in terms of... The Scots have got a commensurate level of passion, I think. You know, they, you know, a lot of... You look at the Scottish players and managers, they've all got... They've they've got the fire in the belly, haven't they? Hmm. And that's what that's what I think Ray Stewart had. That's what it is. And you're right. And it's just those penalties, wasn't it? Just... <sighs> Just couldn't yeah. no no one hits them anymore like that, do they? No, they all try and no. be clever and do these palenkas and try yeah. and chip it in and he just bit you like put, you gotta put your foot through it. A bit like um Piercy. Yeah. He used yeah. he used to whack him in, didn't he? Yeah, he did. It was it was I mean, it was that sort of period, you know, and obviously, you know, someone like you know, Dixie as well, you know, these sort of players who just you know, you nowadays when someone takes a penalty, you're still a little bit wary of whether we're going to score or not whereas back then you know 99% of the time you knew Tonka was going to turn up and Tonka was going to just smack it in and no doubt about it no problem at all no worries whatsoever Um, and he was a decent defender as well great defender great defender um, and but he was a defender. Do you know what I mean? It was like yeah. nowadays you get f- f- fullbacks and yeah, they're more known for being attacking rather yeah. than actually defenders. Which is the wing, the wing back thing. Yeah, yeah, which is the job of a defender is for me to be yeah. defender. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, big, big fan of Tonka. Right, okay, we'll put Tonka in a right, right back. Right. Who's going to go next? Left back, we have got to go Dixie, Julian. God bless you. You got to. Yeah. And again, I saw him take so many penalties and take people out of the game. <laughs> we all did. We all did, yeah. But he was he had the ability, and again, there was not many people like this I can think of who could basically take on a game and orchestrate the crowd from left back. Yeah. You know, if it was just a bit dippy, if it wasn't yeah. quite doing what it's meant to, and then he would go and do like a full tackle into someone, take both their legs up, kick them up in the air, and then the crowd will be just all just going. But he, but what I liked about it, he wasn't just a wasn't he? he wasn't just like a, not a thug, but he wasn't just a, like one of those players who could just, who was just a you know, hitter. He was yeah. fucking skillful, fucking no. good player as well. Yeah. Well, he ended up at Liverpool. They wouldn't have signed him if he wasn't top no. draw. Okay, he no. didn't have a great time up there, but he, st- he still signed for him. Yeah. I remember once he, he. I remember once. I think he was playing. I think it was Man United, and Dixie was up against Cantona, and this was at Upton Park. And he was running. They were chasing a ball, and Dixie took it on his toe and flicked it over Cantona's head, and then Cantona just stood there and went, "Yeah, yeah just, <laughs> just, just, it's just fair play because like he was that good. He loved him. <laughs> loved the man. Such a such a dude." There yeah. is old Julian. Right, so we've got, we got a nice... Oh, we've got Julian and there'll be a fight. It'll be a lampard Decanio fight for the penalties. Very similar to yeah, Bradford yeah, City yeah. fight four, but I like that. Right, okay, centre-half. Who's going to be your first centre-half? It's going to have to be Alvin, just because I watched him so much and he was so good for us, you know. And he, I think he was in the 80 Cup winning team, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So, yeah, 
he's he was just my favorite. I met his son at the West Ham training ground actually when I did a little video for West Ham uh last season, you know. To, oh, for the for, um six seven aside thing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I was at the ground and he was there then and I said, oh, West Ham legend. He went, No, 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 that's my dad. I said, No, but I remember the game against Chelsea yeah. where you uh yeah, there he is, Alvin Martin. Well, he's got, got no hair. hair. But, but we, we don't, don't care. care. <laughs> he's got hair there. Uh, so, yeah. So, he's he's a West Ham legend. Yeah. And he's a, and a scouser. And another one from not round these parts. Yeah. Who lives around here. You know, he's, he's, his son, well, when my daughter was at the private, at primary school down the road, his, his grandson was in the same year and would pick his kid, his grandson up. And yeah. bizarre, you know, you sort of, see Alvin Martin and he's in doing the school run, you know, and uh, very strange, but um, yeah, still lives in, you know, the home church area and stuff. And yeah. Amazing. And he, as you said, he gave us that, that David Martin moment as well, you know, which we'll yeah. always have at that Chelsea. Brilliant. Love yeah. it, man. Thank Love it. Sense. Cool beans. Right. Okay. Who's he going to partner them in the midfield? Well, It's got to be Bobby Moore, isn't it? Oh, I mean, got to be. Moore, I mean, right? you can't, you can't not have Bobby Moore, can you? <laughs> you know, there's a there's a lot of central defenders I could have chosen. You know, Tommy yeah. Taylor uh, was was up there for me as well. But you know, Bobby Moore's the, the legend of the club, isn't he? Yeah, he was. He was. And as you said, you know, you know, you you were you were alive. You were alive during his time because yeah, you know, 60, yeah. 63, wasn't he? He's born. I, think, right? I was Somewhere. born in sixty three. There we go. Um, I remember him playing for Fulham against us in seventy five. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sadly, sadly for Bobby, we we beat them. Alan Taylor scoring two goals. Good old, um, good old tinker. The the strikers are going to be a nightmare for me. All right, we'll get we'll, we'll get yeah, there. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there. Right, we'll get there. Right. Okay. Let's let's go into midfield. Who's who's going to be? Uh, let's go. Let's go left wing. Who's going to be on the left wing? Okay, on the well, I I, I guess Pakatar. Then I'm going to I'm going to choose Pakatar. Mm, nice, nice. Uh, just because I I think he's that good. Yeah, I do think he's that good. He's he's um he's very. I mean, I mean, I, as you said, you put him on the left. So you've done a David Moyes. You see, you put him on the left. You see, um, which is... I know. I know he's really a number ten. But I was just thinking, who's a left foot? Because out of the others, I'm going to play. They're all kind of number tens, really. <laughs> I so, love it. Uh, I love it. I love it's it. The most attacking lineup. And by the way, Declan doesn't make it because he left for wow. Arsenal. So, <laughs> Not, not that I'm bitter, but I'm picking, but, I'm picking my favourite West Ham player. Love it. No, I love okay. it. I, uh, I mean, I for the first six months, I've referred him on the channel as former num- as number forty one, the former captain. And we refused <laughs> to call him Declan Rice until about six months, seven months in. I thought, oh, okay, do you know what? I'll call him Declan Rice now. But he was the former captain, number forty one. Um, yeah, Lucas, he's, he's he's a different different kettle of fish in it at the moment. Absolute quality, absolute quality, and then yep. uh, then we got uh, Alan Devonshire. Oh, Devonshire! What what a love! What a lovely man! What a lovely man! Old Devo is absolute top quality. He was five five grand. You know, he cost us absolute From steel. South Hall, wasn't it? Or yeah, was South. Yes, yeah, 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 South Hall yeah. Motors, wasn't it? Or yeah, yeah, something South like that. Motors. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Um, five grand, and uh, yeah, what we what he wouldn't be like in today's money, you know, it's, oh. uh, yeah, and that's it's the thing you talk about, you talk about the likes of, of Devonshire, and obviously, you know, what what I loved about Alan, you know, obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't really, I was, wasn't old enough really to see him play as such, I was still, still a pup, really, but talking to him and talking to his teammates and stuff like that, you know, obviously, he got injured in that sort of the first, it was almost like Dev one and dev 2.0 and after the injury and dev 2.0 he came and completely reinvented himself as more of a tricky when it, dev 1.0 was very quick fast <laughs> winger and dev 2.0 was you know the pace but he had the skill and yeah. um but doing that what he could do on i look back at i think was it chelsea beat chelsea four nil at stamford bridge in the 85 86 season and it yeah. was literally like a mud bath and he could still be that skillful it's it's incredible, absolutely incredible what they can do. The pitches were terrible back in those days, and the players still were really skillful. Yeah, you know that's what's extraordinary. And he had a good moustache, which I think is something <laughs> which is uh, part of the game which is lost now. 
You know, yeah. I mean, not being, look, it's like a beautiful, beautiful moustache. <laughs> Very and, underrated, that Tash. <laughs> and the shirt as well. I used to, that, was a, that was a really good shirt, really nice shirt as well. And yeah, yeah. Could have done with a haircut, but don't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bless him. Right, we'll put Devo in. I'm like, is Paquetta pa- and Devonshire in the same side? <laughs> it's going to get oh. bad. Here we go. Gonna, Who's next? Trevor Brookin. Oh. How can <laughs> you not have Trev? Sir Trev. Sir Trev. You've got to have Trev, haven't you? You've got to, you've got to have Trev. He's a, yeah, yeah. again, what, what, what a wonderful man, wonderful yeah. man he is, and uh, yeah. fantastic. And again, you know, you know, look again. Could you imagine so the likes of Dev and Trev on the bowling pitches that these players have now? It's, you know, in terms of just the pitch, it's so fantastic, and what they could do would be outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. But Simi, I'd love to see Messi on, you know, playing that bog of a pitch at Stamford's yeah. Bridge and see if he could do what 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 Machiavelli did. But yeah, such a skillful man. Obviously, still really associated with the club as well, well which is lovely to see. And also in the seventies, he he basically single handedly kept us up season yeah. after season, didn't he? I mean, if it hadn't been for him, we would have got relegated a lot more than we actually did. You know. Yes. Yeah. Very true. Um, Love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so, right. Who's 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 going to be the next? Who's going to be the right. who's going to be the, the, the extra to this quartet of midfield? This is this is a bit controversial. Okay, and I'm I hesitate to say it, but he's one of the best players I've ever seen on West Ham. Jonathan and, Spector. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. No, <laughs> uh, Payet. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm well. I, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move. I'm going to move Paqueta to a ten. I've got but Pyatt as we okay. put Pyatt on the wing. Yeah, yeah. Stick, yeah. Stick Pyatt on the left end. I think. I think. I think we get to a point now where we can forgive. Yeah. With him, he, I think he was so good, wasn't he? Oh. I mean, the the way he linked up with um, Lanzini that season, it, you know, and then when um, Lingard turned up as well, they they played some amazing football. You know, it was, it was, it was, they were, um, I mean, you know, Paqueta, particular, uh, Pyatt rather, he was one of those players. And we don't, maybe Paqueta uh, could be seen there, maybe Caduce as well. Is when we buy these players, we traditionally never bought them in their pomp. No, we always bought buy them at the bookends. We are buy them right at the beginning and then we yeah. slog them, flog them to Chelsea. Yeah. Or we buy them like, like Teddy, for example, and they're yeah. literally, I mean, he's he phenomenal for us, or Stuart Pierce, but they're phenomenal for us. Yeah, yeah, but he yeah. was literally at the end of their careers. Like and Jimmy Greaves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, or John Radford, or, you know, these yeah, players yeah, who yeah. like, or Ian we Ryan. could have got he them. Yeah, he, well, he? yeah. yeah, Razor, all, that, that yeah, sort of yeah. period. Parry bought loads of guys who were in yeah. the lot. Nigel Winterburn, literally on the Liam end of Liam their... Brady, I remember, having some great games for us. He was exactly. amazing, Brady. And he was, but he was, but he was literally on on the, <laughs> the last of his last yeah. of the last innings, weren't he? Bless him. <laughs> but same with one. but Payet yeah. was one of the ones who literally we got bang yeah. on that period where he was yeah. that, and he hasn't obviously he's, he's had fits and starts since then. He's playing in Brazil at the moment, um, yeah. Vasco da Gama at the moment, yeah. Um, but he in those two seasons, eighteen months, where long we had him, he was one of the best players in the world. Yeah, and, it broke it broke my heart when he left. I have to yeah. say, yeah. But I don't. For some reason, I don't feel the same antipathy towards him as I do Rice. But it's probably because yeah. Rice is more recent, isn't it? He's one of our own, though, Dave. Isn't he? That's why, yeah. isn't he? He's one Academy boy, own. one of yeah. our own. Yeah. Despite the fact he was at Chelsea until yeah. the age of fourteen. Now um, I was tempted. To, I was tempted to put Martin Peters in there, but I never really saw him play. Yeah. So I've got a. I've, I think I've got a mainly. Stick with the players that I've seen play. Yeah, and I think that's and that's 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 the yeah. idea. Otherwise, I think what happens with these things because we've done over five hundred of them. Everyone yeah. would pick the same eleven, really. Yeah. So I'm just uh, plugging my uh, computer in before he dies. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, the you know you could choose a lot of players from the that sixties team. You know, oh, yeah. Ronnie Ronnie Boy Sissons. Yeah. You know, at, at the back you could have had John Bond. You know. Yeah, um, there's a lot. There's a lot of there's great loads. players there's from loads. that era, but I'm yeah. I'm trying to stick with the ones that I actually yep. saw play. Keeping it, keeping it, keeping it real. I like <laughs> it. I like it. Right up front, then we've got a problem. You said so you've got oh, a problem up front. Sure. So we've got well, the two so, the two most obvious are Cotty and Macabeni for me. Oh, I they thought I was going to say Ilian and David Di Michele, but it doesn't matter. Really <laughs> Andy Carroll 
and uh, and Chikorito. How about Chikorito, them? yeah, and uh, <laughs> Jonathan Caleri, Caleri, yeah. Marco <laughs> Bugas. How about him? Uh, he's the only man. He's the Marco Bugas is the only man who's turned me down for an interview. Uh, really? He's the only man. Yeah, and we have a, we we do have quite a funny chat on like you know on the Insta, but he's the only man who's ever turned me down for an interview. One day how's I will. Your, get how's your caravan, Marco? All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, probably it, why can't get good uh, signal. These ca- <laughs> most caravans don't have Wi-Fi, do they? So that's the issue. Yeah. Um, but, so yeah. it's it's basically for me. It's got to be Cotty and Macavani, but Jeff Hurst as well. So uh, that that's the dilemma because well, I did actually see Jeff Hurst play for England, albeit on the telly. So I did see him play, and he won the World Cup for us. He did. Win. Uh, did he win? The, did we win the World Cup? I don't yeah, know. We yeah, get that one yeah, quite yeah, away. Yeah. yeah. Did you not hear that? Yeah, yeah. Apparently, I mean, we won the I World <laughs> You know, there's, we've had a lot of decent strikers down the years, like we, you know, Alan Taylor, uh, who we signed from Rochdale. Um, yeah, you know, banged in those. Six oh, it's loads. There's, there's loads. You can go through every era, and you've got good. You know, go yeah. go. You know, pre pre Cotty and Mackie, you can look at you know David Cross, and yeah. you know, I mean, oh, he Robson. banged in. Yeah, Pop Robson. Um, you know, you've got, you know, then you go into the 90s, you've got, you know, I, I mean, that's my era. I've always got a soft spot for that 92, 93 promote. Yeah. So, like, Morley, you know, they, they were my yeah. guys. Um, Fish. Be, oh, I love, yeah, yeah, love, yeah. love, love yeah. him. And he's such a lovely guy when he's, when he's down. And did, all that, all that lot, love him. Did you ask uh, Trevor Morley why his wife stabbed him? <laughs> Do you know what we've had? We've had plenty of we've done plenty of stuff with them two together, even fish, and they're so funny. And he's funny. There you go. Well, yeah, tell I, me I, the real story. I've got to know. I, I texted him the other day, right? I texted him the other day to do, <laughs> if you want to do something, and he went, "Yeah." And 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 and, and on the side note, I was I was my my brother did did like a when he was young when he was at school did this one of these sort of. Um, you know they do those hidden camera shows, and and they get like a presenter like surprises. And he, they surprised him at school, you know. And, and it was Dave Benson Phillips, you know, a big sort of TV yeah. present. This was years. This was about twenty years ago, maybe twenty five, maybe it was thirty years ago. And uh, we, we found the video clip on YouTube, so I sent it to Bish and I sent it to Trev. So I thought he might find it quite funny. And he went, "I've just shown my boyfriend." And so, and I realised he was in Spain with Ian, and it was just, <laughs> he still talks about it. It is hilarious. <laughs> it, we had we did an ex player night a while ago, and um, who was the? I think Tony Gale was the compare, and it was Bish. No, it wasn't. It was Trevor Morley, like Stag. Co- I think Cotty was there. Um, Crossy was there, and I think that was it. And Morley was like, and Morley, as I said, and, and Tony Gale went right. Okay, obviously we've got some very, you know, esteemed colleagues here. Tony Cotty, you know, player, young player of the year, nineteen eighty-five. Um, eighty boys of eighty-six scored the, the, the goals with, with Macaveni. David Cross won the FA FA Cup with West Ham. Mm. Brian Deer, we got the European Cup winner finalist. Yeah. And Trevor, you scored a goal in the FA Cup against Farnborough Town. Tell us about it. And it's went, oh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> I was at that game because it, it was a replay, wasn't it? What? I was at the game. I think it was a header. I think he nodded yeah. it in with his head. And it was like, finally, we got rid of these fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love it. It was so funny. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that game vividly. So apparently, boring. Apparently, so apparently boring. The- so and apparently he was telling me afterwards, Trev, that when he came back from from the stabbing and obviously he came back from the injury, um, he was obviously off wasn't at West he wasn't working at West Ham for a couple of weeks while he was recovering. He came back and the first time they went he went into Chad or Eve and the, in the dining room there was no knives. Basically Julian had hidden all the knives. So there was not a knife to be had in the whole time. <laughs> Oh, I can love that stuff. So has, funny, man. Has he ever told you the true story? He hasn't told me. He told me. He told me the story that of him and Bish when they got found in bed. Oh right, and and but, and that, that was and, true. well, it was, but it it was true in the respect of he was, and again, he's he's spoken about this quite openly. He was watching. He was. I think Bish had stayed over that night, and he was. They were reading. He was reading the paper. And Bish basically got like was reading the paper with him, like got in, you know, like 
I mean, they share a fucking bath together. Do you know what I mean? These kids, you know, so he sort of got in next to him to read, read the morning paper and a bloke was cleaning the windows and saw him in bed together. And then that's what started the rumour. You know, he's like, now on Twitter, it'll be the a picture. Yeah, exactly. It was the window cleaner, apparently. <laughs> and there was, but apparently his wife was a bit weird. He's, yeah. But Trevor lives in uh, Norway now. He's oh, a, wow, he's, he? a, he's a, yeah, he's like, he does, he's like their version of Gary Lineker in Match of the Day. Wow. Yeah. Random, wow. random lives. And, and, yeah, and, Bish, right. and Bish lives in Florida. Wow. Oh, um, just going back to our team, I did, before I forget, <laughs> I did want to give an honourable mention in midfield to Yossi Ben Ayun because he, oh, he was close. It was his birthday the other day as well. So, oh, uh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. He was close because he, he gave me a lot of pleasure during that era where we had decent cup runs and I mean the problem is with those teams we we're always flirting against relegation and we were it was part of that sort of uh, I mean now I mean we have it's, I've had, we're in the top we're in the top flight for the longest ever period I think yeah, of yeah. our history now so you were that sort of period like night you know we sort of went down came up obviously we had the Preston Preston one but obviously the year before we'd obviously got to Cardiff again lost to Crystal Palace I still don't play if I ever DJ for like a friend's wedding and some requests glad all over. I still don't play it because <laughs> I have this sort of like PTSD of like 40,000 bloody yellow people oh, jumping to it there. But anyway, um, yeah. And then obviously we went up and then obviously Pards took us up, didn't they? And, yeah, yeah. and we had the FA Cup and we had the, you know, a good good bunch of players still, then. And then you'd have won that game. Yeah, Lionel yeah. Scaloni is all I'm saying. Lionel. Well, we had Dino on the other day and we were talking about it quite a lot, quite extensively. And he was, and we, when I've interviewed like, I don't know, he threw, or, it, he threw it straight to Gerard, didn't he? Just, he, like, he, he threw it into play. He just went, yeah. rather than go down the line, he threw it into play. And it's like, what are you <sighs> doing? He, said he, he said he cried all night, apparently. Well, I think the whole team did. That wouldn't happen in today's, in today's West Ham because we never win a fucking luck. When we do a throw on, <laughs> we never throw it back. We just throw it down the line aimlessly at yeah, Antonio to bang off his car. That'd be fun. <laughs> Final whistle, FA Cup, we'd have won it. Just giving it to the tooth foul. He'd have just oh, thrown it down there. Don't, but yeah, don't. no, it's, um, yeah. I mean, that yeah, you're right. We sort of flirted, didn't we? Then we obviously, then it was... Then it was Curbs, and obviously we had the Great Escape, and then we had uh, Avram, and we had sort of um, Zola, and Avram Grant, and we went down, and yeah. yeah. Oh. Lou Macari was around the, just before Zola, wasn't he? Uh, Lou Macari was well before. Yeah. Lou Macari oh, was, yeah, uh, yeah he was, he was yeah, before. Yeah, he, was, on, he, was, he bought Bish, and um, and uh, he bought Trevor Morley, and, and Ludo in, actually, as well. He yeah. bought some really good players, and then, then just yeah. wasn't very good by all accounts. Uh, I think he was too busy gambling. And, um, and also, I do want to say as well, I haven't forgotten about Joe Cole or Frank Lampard, but if if you go to Chelsea... Phew. There we go. You ought to say, if you go to Tottenham and go to Chelsea, you're out of the daily <laughs> level. Yeah. Oh, Defoe, Defoe, no. Cole Lampard, no. Um, Ince, no. As good as he was, no. Oh, Paul Ince. Yeah. Will we ever, will we ever forgive and forget with Paul Ince? I just don't think no. we ever will, will we? No. It's quite funny, isn't it? I was talking about that. I was talking to someone about um, West Ham players and why we hate certain players and things like that. And <laughs> and I mentioned Paul Ince, and they went, "What?" And I explained to him, they went, "Really?" And I went, "Yeah." Oh, they were, I can see why you hate him now. I was like, "Well, I don't even. I wasn't even around really." I was, I wasn't young, old enough to still, but same with Lamp, Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard yeah. will, will come back 20 years later and still get Lamp, booed. To be honest, I've got a lot of sympathy for Lampard because all the fans were getting on Red Knapp's back and saying it's nepotism yeah. and big fat Frank. <coughs> Our fans were singing to him because he, you know, he had a bit of puppy fat on him in those days. I, I found it hilarious. <coughs> fat Frank. Even now they shout Frat Frank to him. Yeah. And you're thinking, I'm not being funny, right? you all fit into a 3XL shirt and you're telling, you know, and I'm telling him he's big fat Frank, you know, it's just like, yeah, popcorn in the kettle black. But, um, but, but yeah. the, those four players I mentioned, the four of the great, oh. and along with Rio as well, you know, again, if Rio hadn't have gone to Leeds and then Man United, all of those players would have been in with the shout. But I can't, yeah. because they're not, you know, maybe Pyatt people would go, well, it, you know, he was there for even less. He was time. in my, he was, he was in my one, you know, he was, he was in my 11, you know, my, my 11 was, I had, um, God, it was years ago. I think I had, I had Fabianski in goal for me. Cause I never was around to see Parks play. Okay. I was, my first one was Ludo. And although I loved him, my granddad used to call him Loopy Ludo. And that sort of stuck in my head 
for like the yeah. last 40 years. I think I had I'd Julian. I had Julian. I had Rio. He was during my time. Ian Pierce, because I loved Ian Pierce because I loved a player who could play centre half or play up front. Yeah. He was really good for like championship manager or yeah. like at fantasy football league. Yeah. Right back, I had Sebastian Schemmel because he was the first. I, like, I, used, him I well. loved him. And, and Shem's a lovely guy and we've, we've gotten very well. And he's like, he's, he's another crazy one. I mean, for being not around for a long time, he absolutely loves West Ham. Got a big West Ham tattoo on him. Uh, I'll send you a picture of the of, of him. He showed me what he's got in his house. He's got a massive Sebastian Schemmel playing for West Ham, like like <laughs> photo wall. It's really weird. Um, and he's got a restaurant in Luxembourg called Upton Park. Wow, amazing! He, he love it. Midfield: oh. Payet, Noble, Joe Cole, Trevor Sinclair. <laughs> Up front was Di Canio and Dean Ashton. Yeah, that was my. Well, life. I'm about to mention Di Canio as well. With the, of course. Um, so I mean I'm I'm stuck because I remember McAvenny and Cotty and Di Canio and Jeff Hurst are so it's it's really a nightmare separating those four. Uh and at right back I almost chose John McDowell as well because I remember oh, him and his lovely in, hair. Yeah, yeah, his lovely shocker curly hair, wasn't it? Beautiful. Yeah. Uh so I can't decide. I I'm thinking actually Di Canio might have to go in. Yeah. Um and uh, you know, it, but well, you did work with Tony Col- Tony Cotty recently, so probably should put him in. Yeah, should that. we go? Should we? But then, how can I leave out Frank McAvenny and Jeff? Hurst? Well, you could play McAvenny for the away games because you got Decanio <laughs> <laughs> anywhere north of Watford. Yeah, he doesn't turn up for the away game. So, uh, <laughs> well, can we? Can I have two subs? Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll put. Of course, you can. We'll put Hurst and and Macu on the bench. Yeah, Hurst and Macu on the bench. And John and, down. Yeah, okay. And Di Canio <laughs> and Cotty up front. There you go. Love it. Love it. Love it. And, and <laughs> if you want subs, then I'll put Rio and... Uh, and <laughs> All the Joe, Chelsea boys on there. Joe Cole, maybe I'll put... And, and, uh, and Lamps. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> jo, do you know what? Uh, yeah, I mean, Joe Cole, we had Joe on the ch- channel a few months ago, and Joe was amazing. Joe was absolutely amazing and was... It must be weird for him because he's got these, these alliances with West Ham and with Chelsea. And both clubs, I mean, he, it was it was us, Chelsea and Lille. When he went to Lille, he yeah. were the three clubs he, he keeps close to his heart. But obviously, West Ham's his dad's club and stuff like that as well. So, it's, but he was he was he was he was amazing. He was amazing. Hated his time at Villa. Didn't like his time at Liverpool. Um, but uh, yeah, um, where is it? Where is it? I t- that that's that is that's top <laughs> top six. <laughs> Top uh, six for sure. Eat your heart out, Moisey. That's an attacking <laughs> teammate. <laughs> It'll be first on match of the day every yeah. week. Not necessarily because we've won every game. Yeah. Um, might I don't know might how many be chipping ga- a few goals in there. With I no don't know defense. how many games Julian will be able to play with VAR now, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no defensive midfield to speak of. Who needs uh, Edson Alvarez in the team? Yeah, but I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. Dave, man, it's yeah. been an absolute pleasure, my friend. It's been lovely. Oh, I said an hour. It's, we've 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 waffled on, and it's been great. I've absolutely oh. loved it, mate. Thank you so much. And obviously, you. um, you. make sure uh, we'll keep an eye out for your films coming out. So many films yeah, coming out. I know four. Wow, yeah. that's brilliant. Because I've, I'm running out of Netflix to watch now. Okay, I think, well, I've, I think I've completed <laughs> it now. So. Have you Have you seen The Gentleman? Yes. Yeah. What did you think like, of that? I liked that. Yeah, I like that. Oh. That was that was the one and only series that I've actually watched with my wife, because oh, okay. the reason being is if I, you know, we might watch one episode, and I say I've just got to pop down the garage and do a little bit for the channel, I'll go back and she's watched another two or three, so I'm always so I'm I can't keep up with her, so oh, I tend okay. to watch stuff and then I'll say to her, you'll like this and leave her be, you know. But the gentleman <laughs> I thought was was very good. I thought it was yeah. very good. I yeah, enjoyed that decent. one. I, I thought it was Theo James's audition for James Bond, actually. Good sh- <laughs> yeah, good shout. Good yeah. shout. No, yeah, no, I thought it was very good. They're, they're, and as I said, it tends to sort of, those things tend to sort of come in fits and starts. You have a couple of really good ones at the same time, and then there's nothing. It's like ITV dramas. You know, there's some good ones yeah. at the moment. Passenger is quite good. I can't get my head around it. It's quite good. But there's another called Dead Eye coming out as well. And, um, yeah. Some good ones coming out, but we'll make sure we get your video. You watch your watch your movies, David, because I always uh, always yeah. admire your work. But uh, thank you. I think you'll love Bermondsey Tales. That's uh, yeah. 
that's your classic gangster thing. It's got oh. people like Frank Harper in it and uh, <coughs> Linda Robson's in it actually from um, oh, Birds of the Feather. Yeah, Birds of the Feather. Because her, because 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 Pauline Robson, Pauline Quirk, her her son's Charlie's a big West Ham fan. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. There you go. There we well, go. It's the right, right neck of the woods for the hammers, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brilliant, man. Anyway, uh, I'll kick you out, so don't worry about leaving. But All thank right, you so man. much, David. I love it, mate. Pleasure. Nice working with you, mate. Cheers, man. Take care. See ya. And there he was, Davey. What a top man. Anyway, if you like what we do, don't forget to like, comment, share. Uh, hopefully, it's a nice hour and 20. You've eaten your, your Sunday breakfast. Hopefully, we've beaten Wolves if we haven't. Hopefully, we had a good performance if we haven't. Boys out. <laughs> Anyway, take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble, keep the faith, my friends, and see you guys very, very soon. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.